What's going on smart people? Today is the end of my first week of grad school for physics and what I want to do is I want to take these initial conditions, this data that I have regarding the first week of these classes and make some predictions on how the semester is going to go. For those of you who might be new, I'm taking three courses this semester, the first of which is Mathematical Methods for Physics, which is topics in math taught by a physicist instead of a mathematician. I'm also taking the first part of a two-part course in quantum mechanics, and just like an undergrad, first semester quantum is always going to be revolved around the Schrodinger equation, angular momentum, spin, things of that nature. And then I'm also taking another course in classical mechanics, and this is just taking Newton's laws, which everyone has heard of, F equals MA, pushing it to their limits and formulating them in a bit of a different way by introducing the concepts of Lagrangians, Hamiltonians, and a lot of other subtle things. And then out of those three, I want to make a prediction as to which one I think is going to be the easiest, which one I'm going to enjoy the most, and which one I think will be the most difficult. But I'm going to be basing these predictions off of a couple things, namely the course outlines that I went over in the past two videos, coupled with the fact that I've already taken these courses at the undergraduate level, so I have a general idea of what it entails, as well as first impressions from the professors who are going to be teaching these courses. So, as for the course that I think will be the easiest for me, I think that that's going to be quantum mechanics for, for a few reasons. The first one is that out of the three classes, this is the one where I've actually had two semesters of it in undergrad, whereas math methods and classical mechanics, I only had one semester. I also think that I took math methods and classical mechanics before I was really ready to take on those types of classes, because at the time, I don't even think I'd had differential equations or linear algebra yet. I think at most, I was in Calc 3. So my math just wasn't there yet for me to really extract as much as I could out of the undergraduate classes and take it with me to grad school. Now, that's not I'm just saying I don't know my way around a line integral or principle of least action. I'm just saying that's the reason why those classes might not be the easiest ones for me. So you gotta watch yourself before accusing someone of not knowing Hamilton's equations. That's that's a good way of getting yourself spaghettified, Holmes. In my experience for undergrad, it just seemed like uh, there was a direct relationship between how much effort I put into quantum mechanics, and I put in a lot of effort into those two courses, and what exactly I got out of that, and that didn't really seem to be the case for the other two courses, because my math just wasn't there yet, and I think my, my math tools were more refined when I got into my quantum course, which allowed me to get so much more out of them. As for the most difficult class, I think that that, without a doubt, is going to be classical mechanics, and that's a weird thing to say, considering, you know, our eyes are tuned to see things classically. It's the thing that's most readily seen in nature, at least by us. So for it to be so difficult is, is almost counterintuitive. But part of my reasoning is this. If we go back to quantum mechanics, there's a limited number of potentials you could introduce to like the Schrodinger equation that A, don't require numerical methods of solving, and B, still correspond to something physical. But when it comes to classical mechanics, you can make these problems as arbitrarily difficult as you want and still lead to analytical results, still lead to things that you can technically solve on paper that are just going to be a pain in the ass. I mean, they don't always have to be, but you can always introduce more friction, or you can always introduce more external forces. I think you see what I'm getting at with that. When it comes to quantum mechanics, you've got like the finite square well, the infinite square well, and different versions of the harmonic oscillator, and that's sort of it, unless I'm forgetting something else, as far as what you'd experience in undergrad. So at least in my experience, you know, classical mechanics can be very complicated in a very boring way. Whereas when you take a really complicated problem and say quantum mechanics, you're still doing quantum mechanics. I mean, that's pretty cool. Now this is not to say I'm not looking forward to taking classical mechanics. I just think it's going to be very challenging and tedious. But part of the reason I'm looking forward to the class in the first place is because I know it's going to be really challenging for me. You know, and as a physics student, I like to challenge myself mentally. I like to be mentally challenged. Moving on. So I think quantum mechanics is going to be the easiest for me. I think it's still going to be very challenging, but we're talking about the lesser of three evils here. I think that classical mechanics is going to be the most difficult, and when it comes to the thing that I'm looking forward to the most, the thing that I'm going to enjoy studying, I think that's going to be math methods. My reasoning for this, well, the topics alone that we're going to be covering make this an exciting course for me. Green's functions are pretty new, so I'm excited to delve into that. I'm super stoked to do more Fourier analysis because that was something not skipped over in my education, but not not heavily emphasized, and I'm definitely 
definitely super stoked to do tensor analysis at the graduate level. I know that there's some GR in this course. Even today when we were going over just vector review, like vector analysis, we were doing it in like a tensor notation, which I could appreciate. And my professor just seems like such a cool guy. He likes to make these allusions to music theory, which I can also appreciate. I have a meeting with him next week. I'm, I'm hoping to maybe try to do a little informal research. I know he's a lattice QCD guy, so... Fingers crossed on that. So math methods just seems to intersect, you know, me genuinely being interested in the material and having a professor who really wants to teach this class and who seems really enthusiastic. We'll see how these things shift as the semester goes on, but what I want you to do is make some predictions for yourself as to when it comes to the classes that you're taking, which one do you think will be the easiest, most difficult, and the one you'll enjoy the most. And then at the end of the semester, we're going to revisit this so long as I remember to and see if this changed at all. So be sure to make those comments in the comment section and I'll see you guys there.